Hi, this video is a guide for how to make a timetable using the ASC software. I've been using this software for mm, about 11 years now and I've, you know, it's uh, timetables are never something you make once and then it continues the rest of the term. You always need to make changes. I've, I've taught on programs where you need to change every week. So I find this software is very helpful. I've seen other people using different systems. Uh, something as basic as Excel could be used to make a timetable of sorts to present it anyway. And then obviously we have the banner system to uh, show it to, to record attendance and to show it to students. But the ASC software is what we use to communicate, to design the, the timetables. Here is an example of the software. Uh, and when it looks like this, it can start to look a little bit uh, daunting. You're unaware of how all the, the, uh, the boxes work. The interface is also quite old fashioned. It looks a bit Windows 98, to be honest. But as a product, it's very uh, clear. It's easy to use and it's quick to make changes. And the final version, when it starts to look like this, creates a nice looking timetable that's, you know, it's student friendly, it's good for departments and other people that don't work with the timetable every day to understand what's going on. So why is good timetabling important? It's the tool that creates an efficient working system for the school. It provides order. It is the framework for how the term works and how the courses you make are delivered. So you put a lot of effort into the materials, the lesson plans, but if the timetable's not right, it can impact that. Student satisfaction can really increase with a good timetable. Teaching and learning can be affected, of course. It provides clarity and data for all the other people that are involved, the other stakeholders, the management, HR, student services. You may have sponsors. When they see a good timetable and clear, they, they find it easier to get involved. There's balance in the week. It can help teachers to not get burnt out if you consider how the timetable is structured. You can make adjustments mid-term if necessary. A good timetable can actually improve attendance if it's structured in a certain way. And if there's reasons for cover, for sickness or other reasons, then it, it helps to provide effective cover. So this video is part one. There's going to be three videos. The main video is part two. That's how we create the timetable. But you do need part one and part three. Uh, part one is building the framework. So if, if you did not receive the timetable before, then you might need to build it from scratch. So you do need to understand part one. Part two is where we put the timetable together. And part three is enhancing it to make it just look a bit better. So part one, we're going to look at building the, the timetable framework. First of all, you need the software. <laughs> so ASC soft timetables is a program that will be on your laptop. You get it from your campus IT team. So the registration is bought by IAT and it's in Dubai, it seems to have a Dubai address. But if you just go to your campus IT and say, I would like the ASC timetables, they should be able to install it. I'm reluctant to put the name of the people that I would contact because it might change depending on the campus. When you use the software, it updates automatically. It asks you when you log in, do you want to get an update? On the tool, there is, it says a help button that you can click and it does give you some advice. It's not the best structured advice, but there is available there if you can find it. And also lots of other people around the world use the software. So there are tutorials on YouTube. Okay. Building a framework, the really, really simple way is to copy the file from someone else and you update your own version. So here is the file in my folder and it's called a ROS file. I don't really know what that means, but it relates to the, the timetable software. If you just get a copy of last term's timetable and copy it in there and build your own, then you don't need the rest of this video. You've built the framework but I will show you that anyway. When you label it, obviously you can have your own system, but I tend to label the campus or the program. So just for the sake of this video, I'm doing one called MUFC. 
The program is diploma, the term is the code of the term, and the version is 1.1. So I would name my timetable like this. It seems to work quite well. You can change it for yourself. So the first thing we need to do when building the framework is school details. So you click on the tab at the top and, top and click this school button. In there, you need to add the name of the school, the academic year, the periods per day, the bell times, the weekend, and the parameters. So here is the basic timetable with nothing really added. I'm gonna to go to school. The name of the school I've entered here, the academic year I've entered here. This appears in other parts of the timetable, so that's why you need it. Periods per day. We run a system with seven periods, but it does go up to 31 periods in the day. You might have 12 periods if you have a timetable that has day and night as well, so you might put that. So you click there. Bell times means the times of the classes. So in here, you can edit. This is what we have in this campus. You go into edit to change them. The name of the period, you might have a different name. And you put the start and the end time for each one. You need to add a break if you want, and you can insert it between if you want to show when the breaks are. The number of days, how many days you have in your timetable per week. What weekend do you have? Is it Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday? And then the final thing is parameters. On here, it's a nice little thing just to check exhaustion, max number of consecutive persons taught by a teachers. So you might want to just limit how many consecutive classes your teachers teach. This is one of the things that helps with burnout. I've set mine at six. You might want to set it at five, but uh, it depends on how complex your timetable is. You might even occasionally have to go to seven. So the next thing, we're going to build are the subjects, the classes, the classrooms, and the teachers. So I'll show you in a second, but for each one, you need to follow these steps. You click on new, then the subject title, the short version, you need to consider the color and the classrooms if it's a special room. Classes the same, you put the longer the short name, the name of the, if there's a class teacher. And then if there's a division, if they split the class. Classrooms, new, the name, the long and the short, if it's a home classroom, and then teachers, the new, the name, and like this. I'll show you now. So here we have these four tabs. They're quite important. You use them a lot. So you click on subjects, click on new. I'm just going to put a subject of English. My code. I'm just going to put the short version, I tend to put the code that might appear on the system because you can flip between the, the way you, the title of it or the actual code of it. The colour, this colour looks a little dark for me, so I'm just going to lighten it up there. So that's dangerous, click on the colour, click on change, you can choose any colour, these colours are easy or you can change the colour there. You'll see later why that works. And then classrooms. I'm just going to keep it as a home classroom because English just needs a normal classroom. And then I'll close. And then here's what I have made before. These are all the subjects that this school is going to use with the codes. Now I'll enter a class. So this is the groups. Again, click on new. The name. So we tend to have long names for classes which no one seems to understand, so then you might have a shorter version of the name. So there would be the long version and the short version. The color seems good. Class teacher, so this person is the person that you might ask for reports from for a class or to communicate some information to them. So you might set a name of a class teacher there. I'll do that later. And again, here are the five groups that I'm going to put in this timetable. They've all got a short version, they've all got a long version. For classrooms, we click on classrooms, we click on new, we enter the name of the classroom. I think the short version should stay the same length, it can be, it doesn't have to be shorter. Home classroom is when you assign it to a particular class. So I want this to be the home classroom for the A1 class. I'm going to click on them so they appear here in the selection, click OK. Now that's done. 
If I went back to the class, we can probably see that they have a home classroom assigned to them somewhere. And here are the classrooms I've assigned. I've also put in a physics lab and a computer lab so that uh, specialist subjects can go there. So this physics lab can be assigned to the physics lab and not the normal classroom. And then finally, we have teachers. I'm going to enter a new teacher. My teacher is going to be called Mr. Ronaldo, first name Cristiano, and we'll just call him Ronaldo for short. I don't know why, but it asks male and doesn't ask if there's a female. I've never seen an option where that is relevant, but maybe it would be a constraint somewhere, but I've never seen it on here. And again, you need to make sure the color for this person. It's Ronaldo, of course he's red. And here are the other teachers that will work on this system. There are three more things you need to consider when you're building your timetable framework. The color, so I, I touched on that briefly. You need to set a color for each thing. This helps with the timetable design and it also helps you to see when you're making the timetable where things are used. If you, you start to see colors more than what the actual subject is because you relate to it. It makes the placement quicker on the system. You should always choose a light color. It offers these dark colors, but choose a light color, trust me, because when you print the timetable in color or black and white, a dark color, net you lose all the details from the timetable. And the software tends to vary it, so you don't get two teachers that are both yellow. You'd get a yellow, a blue, a green, and a red, or something like that. So if I go into my timetables, I look at my teachers, these colors seem okay to me, but I'm not happy with this color blue, so I'm just going to edit for skulls. Go down to color change, background color. I can change the color completely, or I can go into the color that I have, go to custom, and just lighten it up myself. And I think that would look better on the timetable. Time off. Now time off is what we use so that we can show a period that cannot be used for a class, a subject or a teacher, or even a classroom as well actually. You might use it for a shorter day. So here we have shorter Fridays, you don't have classes on a Friday afternoon, we're going to put time off. You might use it for teachers who have a special duty, maybe they do something else on the, other than teaching, curriculum development for example. And on the system, you choose a, a check mark, a cross mark, or a question mark. So in my team timetable, I have a teacher called Robbo. And if I click on here on the time off, I have changed the first two periods every day because he does things in the morning. He has 10 periods where he helps the manager with something else. That's non-teaching. So he, I don't want him to teach there. For the classes, I've put time off on a Friday afternoon for each of them. Now if I click on there and do set for more, I can set it for all the classes and I don't have to repeat my task if it's the same for everyone. You can just see it on the screen now. And then I also have a subject, PE, which I don't want to be first thing or last thing in the evening, in the afternoon because no one wants to get ready for PE first thing, so I've cancelled it for the first, cancelled it for last, but I will not set it for more because it's only relevant to PE. And the last thing here is constraints. So we use constraints to make an ideal timetable. You need to think about things that might affect things like how many times people see a teacher, how many classes a teacher has with one group every day. You can set these. but. You don't have to be bound by them. You can relax them later if it makes your timetable more difficult to make. You can set max number of lessons per day. You can set which classrooms go for the which uh, specialist rooms. And you can set so that subjects are spread out through, spread through the week so they only have one of those classes every day rather than all the same class in the same day. So if you see on here, if I click on the teacher, I'll go to constraints. There's a few different things I can put, but one of the main ones is set the minimum maximum numbers a day. I don't want this teacher to teach more than six periods a day, and I'm going to set it for all my teachers. Dock that constraint in. The number of consecutive lessons, we also had that earlier, so you can set the constraint here as well and set it for more or we'll set it for all teachers. Click on OK. 
Okay, and so when you've done all that, you'll have a timetable that starts to look from this, excuse me, this with nothing really showing, to this with more groups showing. We've got all the subjects included. We've got all the classes, the classrooms, and the teachers. But we also have things like time off considered. So now we have the framework. Now we have the foundation from which we can build our timetable.